Hi, Decca. Hello. Come on up. How are you? I'm great. What a room. What a It's room. been so long since seeing this much people in one room. Yes, <laughs> all in person. Yeah. And there's no name tag in the corner, like in uh, when you video chat. But that's, <laughs> we'll get used to it. Yes. <sighs> okay, so you are the initiator of Womanisa, mm -hmm. uh, a female, all-female network, and you won the Grand Swedish Journalism Award for your initiative shift. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not even a journalist, are you? No, I just hacked the system. <laughs> <laughs> so you started Bling. Mm -hmm. uh, to, so it's you made it your business to help other businesses and like you call it the is it the suburb startup movement yes how did you decide to do that uh, it began from my background i come from an entrepreneurial family where i have seen my mother and all of her sisters start businesses uh, and i saw actually at first hand how that enabled her to empower herself to and able to provide for her family as a refugee because her, she started her company just six months after we moved to Sweden. Six months after moving yeah. to Sweden? Because that was the only thing she could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I experienced that firsthand. So I know what entrepreneurship can do for a person, uh, not just for themselves, for the whole family. Um, and the second thing is I myself, as a black Muslim woman, have experienced inequality at first hand. So for me, I was very fortunate to have a community, a family and friends, where I was actually encouraged to take over the world. So I actually believe I can conquer the world. But that is a very important thing to have it from home. Uh, so for, for me, Bling is a perfect combination of that too. Entrepreneurship as a tool to reach your full potential and a community as a base for support and empower empowerment. So I believe entrepreneurship can change the world and I'm doing that to Bling. I believe you can change the world. Yeah, okay, I so do. <laughs> So, let's hear more about this Grand Swedish Journalism Award. You got that because you started Shift mm -hmm. together with Break It. They're journalists. Exactly. So, so, and what do you do with Shift? Tell us what it is. Shift is a platform where we uh, connect entrepreneurs with investors. Uh, it's a neutral platform where you don't have to have the network before you come there or the money or the contact or whatever you need. Uh, so it connects entrepreneurs with investors that usually are overlooked. And it gives investors a first-hand view of an untapped market that they usually don't come in contact with because you know how our networks look like. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because so little of investments go into companies that are started exactly 0.8 percent how much 0 0.8 zero barely one percent wow mm. do you have like any success stories that came out of the shift initiatives because there were a lot of investments made yeah we are up now in 25 million invested through just the platform of shift uh, so that's a lot <laughs> uh, one of our success stories is actually sharing the stage with me today, uh, Diamo, which is Safa and Heba. They started their journey through Bling two years ago, uh, where they just had an idea. And a year ago, they got five investors on board on their vision, and now they're changing the life of so many students. And they will be after me, so that's a proof of concept, I think. Ah, oh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> I love how you took your network and like then your partner was like, but I know rich people, so let's just... I know a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> but it is that easy to create change. Maybe sometimes when we're talking about change, it feels so abstract, but you can do it by connecting my network through Stefan's network and create sh shift that are actually generating a lot, of, a lot of millions. So don't forget it today when you're getting out of this room that only with your network you can create change. And by beginning with that. Yeah, like the best contacts are in our network exactly. already. We just need to talk. Communicate them out. Yeah. <laughs> but investing in underrepresented entrepreneurs, it mm -hmm. seems like a so obvious thing to do. That's like how you do any great thing. You find a niche where nobody is and you do mm -hmm. that. Why has it taken so long? I think because we're focusing on the investment as the problem. We, of course, there's a gap in the investment world, but the gap is in our society. So we have to change what is the crea what's creating the ch uh, gap rather than just, just changing the gap. Uh, we have structural barriers in our society that makes it harder for some people. 
uh, to just get access to investment, not even get investment, just the access to investment and the networks are hard. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to change the whole ecosystem before just thinking about the investment. It's on the top of the iceberg and everything else needs to be changed for that to be changed. So very true. So you also, you have your startup, you host this investment thing, and you also have a podcast, yes. Mot Alla Odds, Against mm -hmm. All Odds. Listen to it. It's good. <laughs> it is super good. Uh, but so you meet uh, entrepreneurs who yeah. are like, who made it against all odds. Exactly. But like, you're an award-winning CEO <laughs> yourself. So do you see like any common traits with the founders who've actually made it? I think there are more common traits than I would, I would like to think from the beginning. Uh, but the most common thing that I see in between them is their commitment to this problem that they want to solve. Usually they want to solve a problem that they are very passionate about uh, and start companies around that. And because of that passion, there's a commitment. So that commitment is their fuel for their journey. Like when it's hard, it is not motivation that is the key. I have to just say that out loud. It is actually commitment. Because when you're committed to something, you will do it whether you like it or not that day. Mm. So there's their commitment. And the other thing is their courage, which I admire. Uh, they take a leap of faith and they're not afraid of failure, which is, I think, the biggest thing that stops us from doing greatness. In our audience, we have around 2,500 people in tech. And just looking into the future, I foresee that at least a couple people here will make it big with their company and find themselves with millions and millions of kroner to spend. Where do you spend money when you made it big as a startup? You invest in other startups. Oh, you so, retire. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so what advice do you have for future us when we're rich investors and want to find entrepreneurs to invest in? To actually choose diversity. Not, uh, because th there's a direct correlation between diversity and profitability uh, and innovation. So I think you have to make an active choice to choose that. Not think that diversity may come my way or it's just a good thing. I would say choose divers diversity and that will bring you success. Oh, amen, wow. I believe you, that is, that is the best advice Future Me has ever gotten. <laughs> thank you so much, Dekka, and uh, thank you for everything that you contribute with to our tech society. Thank you very much. Dekka! Yeah. <laughs>